On October 10th, 1954, Rocky De La Fuente was born in San Diego to an automobile dealer father and a business park developing mother. Rocky was raised on and off in both California and Mexico, later graduating with a Bachelor of Science in Physics and Mathematics from the National Autonomous University of Mexico and studied accounting and business administration at Anahuac University. He later took over his dad's car dealership and later expanded and acquired 28 more car dealership franchises. Around that time, he got married to Katayon Yazdani and had five kids. He later expanded his industries to include banks, nursing homes, and currency exchange facilities, expanding his industries to both Mexico and Uruguay. Though in 2004, the FDIC had barred De La Fuente from participating in the banking industry for using his banks as, quote, his personal piggy bank. And he pretty much stayed in the business industry up to 2016, when he announced his intention to seek the Democratic nomination for president, he stated that his reason for running came from dissatisfaction with all the candidates, while also feeling the lack of the Democratic Party's candidates would raise his profile even more so, basically copying the idea of another businessman who was running for president, who Rocky was especially dissatisfied with, given the fact that he's Latino. However, De La Fuente's plan didn't necessarily pan out, as the field did eventually coalesce around an ideological split between two people, and he only got 0.22% of the vote. Around the same time, he also decided to seek the Democratic nomination for the Florida Senate race, but it was essentially the same story with different faces, only getting around 5.38% of the vote. But not that long afterwards, he decided that he was going to form a brand new political party called the American Delta Party as a vehicle to run in the general election, he chose another former Democratic candidate, Michael Steinberg, to be his running mate. He was also able to earn the endorsements of former Socialist Party nominee Brian Moore and a 2016 satirical candidate. These nuts! <laughs> Got him! He made an appearance in the free and equal debate with Constitution Party candidate Daryl Castle and Party for Socialism and Liberation candidate Gloria Lariva. With his money, he was able to get on the ballot in 20 states and got 0.02% of the vote. He also sued three states for their strict ballot access laws, winning two of them. Not that long afterwards, he announced his intentions to seek the Democratic nomination for president again in 2020, but exactly one year after losing the presidential general election, De La Fuente decided to seek the Republican nomination for mayor of New York City. De La Fuente's reasoning for doing so was that he had apparently ran a poll that showed him beating Paul Massey and Mitchell Faulkner, the only two Republican candidates that were running at the time. However, the specific reason for his party switch came from him claiming that the Democratic Party was trying to push him specifically out of the race in 2016, even claiming that Bernie and Martin O'Malley were controlled opposition. However, there was one major issue with Rocky running for mayor. You see, he didn't live in New York City, he lived in San Diego, and one of the requirements for being New York City mayor happened to be living in New York City. But Rocky pushed against this by saying that he was trying to buy an apartment in NYC, but he was denied because he was Hispanic. He participated in a multi-party debate that was hosted by the Reform Party of New York State. But not that long afterwards, two supporters of Nicole Maliotakis went to the NYC Board of Elections and raised concerns of Rocky's ballot petition, and on August 1st, he was removed from the ballot. However, Rocky did not waste any time to return to politics, making his grand comeback in 2018 when he decided to run in the California Senate race as a Republican. Then he filed to run in Florida, then in Minnesota, then in Washington, then Wyoming, then Hawaii, then Vermont, Delaware, and Rhode Island. Now you might say, why did he do this? Well, he claimed that he was trying to raise issues with our lax ballot laws, calling out the fact that he technically could have been on the ballot in all of the Senate races if he chose to, but he also seemingly added the caveat of, hey, I mean, if I do win, <laughs> I mean, what am I supposed to do? And seemed to actually try to develop valid excuses for him to run in the states. For example, he lives in California, he's run for Senate already in Florida, that makes sense. Why Wyoming though? His response to that very same question was, I love Wyoming, I love to ski in Jackson Hole, Plus, the filing fee is only 200 bucks. He did not win any of those primaries, obviously, but supposedly, his results in Vermont and Hawaii were within the margin of error of the top two candidates in both races, and they claimed that Rocky potentially played spoiler in both of them. 
You may have guessed by now that his plans of running as a Democrat in 2020 were pretty much gone, instead opting to primary Donald Trump. Rocky ran a Trump 2016-like campaign in the idea that he was mostly a self-financed candidate, spending $15.13 million of his own cash, only raising 7253 from outside sources. His Republican bid had faced a lot more suppression than his Democratic one, as the GOP had officially decided to renominate Trump by canceling a ton of state primaries. De La Fuente, however, did decide to file in every single state that was going to hold a primary, even if that earned him ire from the local party. Connecticut's delayed primary led to a bit of a contention, as their state GOP had basically tried to bully him off the ballot, literally trying to get people to call him to pressure him to leave. All of this drama may have gotten Rocky some more ideas, as while he was simultaneously running for the presidency as a Republican, he filed and got second place in the American Independent Party primary. Heck, many people saw the repeats already happening, so Libertarian Party chairman Nicholas Sarwark basically just asked De La Fuente, hey, you want to run for the Libertarian nomination? This clearly isn't working with you and the Republicans. But before he did that, he decided to do something else. You see, he decided to run for the 21st House District in California. Why? Simple. His son Ricky was running for that seat, plus a couple of others, and Rocky had basically tried to help him get to the runoff. Speaking of sons and shady things, here's something else interesting that happened during the 2020 election cycle. Rocky's other son, Rocky De La Fuente III, had actually filed to run as a Democrat. But it wasn't until he filed in New Hampshire that it was made aware that this was a different Rocky De La Fuente. There's also the added fact that Rocky III did not actually actively campaign at all. So there's potentially a lot of shady stuff regarding that run as well. We'll get back to the De La Fuente family in a second, but first, let's wrap up the story. Rocky, of course, did not end up winning the Republican nomination, so, much like last time, he decided to continue his campaign in the general election, running under the nomination of the Alliance Party, a coalition of smaller centrist parties like the Independence Party of Minnesota. A perennial candidate by the name of Darcy Richardson was nominated to be his running mate. De La Fuente also received the nominations of the Natural Law Party in Michigan and the American Independent Party in California, where, interestingly enough, Kanye West was nominated to be his running mate. Which led to a lot of interesting things, as both Kanye was running a candidacy of his own, and Richardson flat out demanded that either West be removed or he'd leave the ticket, neither of which ended up happening. And De La Fuente, of course, ended up not getting that many votes, with only 0.05%. And as of now, that is essentially where De La Fuente has ended up. Now, as you may have guessed, Rocky and his children have not necessarily been doing so hot, but they have been making themselves well known in the US political scene, despite the fact they just entered four years ago. At this point, you might even think, is De La Fuente trying to build a political dynasty? Well, those aren't my words, those are apparently his, because he stated, point blank, he wants to do just that. And essentially, he's just gonna keep burning his money until the De La Fuente family can reach the level of the Bushes or the Kennedys. Now, of course, we're going to have to wait to see how that pans out. Will he try to continue building the Alliance Party? Or will he basically build a new party when he loses the Democratic or Republican nomination in the next cycle? We'll have to find out when it happens. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and click that bell to notify when the future video of mine comes out. And if you're interested in more content from me, you can go to my website, follow me on Twitter, join my Discord, check out my articles on the Independent Political Report, or consider supporting me on Patreon.